What is up? I'm Moana Turtle, and today we're going to be doing a deck profile of a deck that I'm not sure what to call it, so I'm going to call it the Babies Wombo Combo One Turn Kill with the Asterix Deck. Uh, name subject to change. It's a working name, and so this deck revolves around the Togepi Cleffa Jigglypuff Jigglybuff. Um, tag team or I'm going to be referring to as the babies tag team and we have two of those and basically the whole point of the deck is to execute supreme puff gx powered up uh, which says if you have 16 energy total so that's 2 plus 14 extra fairy energy 16 fairy energy you're going to take another turn but in addition to that you remove your opponent's entire bench and then on your next turn which you know again your opponent doesn't get to do anything in between you want to knock out his active therefore winning the match the way we're going to do that is Shaman Prism Star. So it's a Prism Star, so it can only be a one of, but it should be able to one hit knock out anything that your opponent has in the active, especially after executing Supreme Buff, uh, Supreme Puff, because even after retreating, you should sell 14 energy on here, plus two energy on Shaman for its attack. It is leaf energy though, but basically says 30x damage times all the basic energy attached to uh, all your Pokemon. So that should deal uh, by default 480 damage. Uh, so that should knock out basically anything. All right. So how are we going to pull off this thing? Obviously, we're going to need a lot of energy. So our energy package right now consists of 22 fairy energy and three grass. Um, I'm not sure about these numbers. This is just kind of where we are at right now. Technically, everything kind of revolves around this. And so we do have enough so that if all of them are prized, you can still pull it off. That's probably unnecessary. So probably if we do want to cut back, if there's other cards we want to add, this might be a target. We have three leaf energy, so we can sustain one energy being prized. If Shaman's prized, uh, at that point, we're going to be using Rolling Panic, but that can do a lot of damage but isn't the most reliable way to do damage so shaman is definitely preferred so the rest of this deck is to help enable that combo and the primary way is using the someone told me these i can simply refer to these as the hat ladies and we got morgan dana evelyn and nita three copies of each and basically so morgan is the primary one which says you in order to play this card discard Dana, Evelyn, and Nita, the other three, from your hand. If you do that, look at the top 12 cards of your hand of your deck and discard any number or attach any number of energy cards you find there to your Pokemon any way you like. Shuffle the rest into your deck. And that will draw all these fairy energies out and attach them to these guys. If you have Shaman on the bench, you get the leaf energy, attach them to Shaman. The rest of the hat ladies are primarily for that combo. In a pinch, you can use Dana and Evelyn. I don't think Nita is that good, but uh, Evelyn will essentially draw four cards if your opponent's active is a stage one, and Dana, if it's a stage two, you can tutor up two cards. In general, uh, to be honest, I almost never use these two abilities. However, especially in the event that, let's say, one Morgan, one Nita is prized, so you have an extra Dana and Evelyn, maybe at that point it's appropriate to use them. Uh, Nita, I'm not sure, yeah, sure, ramp up one, but that's not really uh, the point here. One thing that's really important to understand is that these supporters, this part of the combo, relies entirely on the energy being in your deck. If they're in your hand, if you have an abundance of energy in your hand, uh, we actually currently have no way of shuffling those cards into our hand because uh, a lot of times our hands will be very large. So if we Cynthia, most likely we're going to lose parts of our combo. So we want to keep all the energy in our deck and everything else around this deck is going to revolve around pulling all the other cards out, but not the energy. So here we have the, probably the most important supporter is Misty's Favor. So it is a four of. Misty's Favor simply says, search your deck for up to three supporter cards, put them in your hand, then shuffle your deck. Very handy. And we're going to be hopefully executing that or some one other supporter every turn. And so we have two Lapras as well. So Lapras simply says, Mermaid's Call, once in your turn, you may add Misty's Favor from your discard pile to your hand. One tip is that only use Mermaid's Call when you're about to play the Misty's. There is a few situations where that is not the uh, most advantageous way to play it. But I would say to play around Reset Stamp, don't 
end your turn with your only Misty's Favor in your hand because um, then when you get, if you get reset stamped, it's no longer in play. You can't even mermaid's call it. So if you can, just leave it in your discard pile at the end of your turn. We have two LT Surge strategy. Uh, basically, if you are behind, which at some point you likely will be, as we don't plan on doing any attacking, uh, we don't plan on really taking any prizes unless they use like Mistrevious or something or Miss Magius. Uh, LT Surge, you can play an additional supporter this turn or two additional supporters and can basically allow you to Morgan twice, potentially allow you to miss these and then Morgan or something like that, and then some other supporters still to come we have two stevens resolve so misty's primarily all around getting the supporters out uh but how do we get the other parts of our combo stevens resolve will fill this he does have the disadvantage of ending your turn so if you want to use lt surge you have to like miss these first and then stevens resolve uh but stevens resolve you kind of want to get these off right off the bat um you know maybe not even just to draw these two cards but some of these other cards that we still have remaining to uh basically support the combo Next is for Jirachi, a great Stevens Resolve target. Jirachi is great, um, super strong. We don't have any reset boards. We don't plan when we throw Jirachi out there. It's kind of just will be out there to continue to draw cards until it gets knocked out. Um, but Stellar Wish is perfect for this deck because it adds card draw, but without drawing any energy. In fact, it can't draw energy. So it'll basically draw up the supporters or any of our trainers while leaving all the energy in there. Again, we don't want to draw energy. So we have four Jirachi and a perfect target for this deck is Lily's Pokey Doll. So this is primarily just for stall and it's kind of like perfect in that let's say one of our uglier matchups or there's a lot of ugly matchups actually, but let's say we're facing ADP and they managed to pull off their um, GX, so we can only sustain three knockouts less if they manage to hit uh, the babies. But this thing is a zero prize active Pokemon, and let's say you manage to Morgan up, but however, Lily's Pokedoll is in the active. You can, it's a free switch as well, because just you can add the shuffle this back into your, or add it to the bottom of your deck, put the babies in the active, and execute the combo. So perfect Jirachi target, uh, just a staller. And because if you're basically playing Misty's every turn, you know while you're stalling, you're uh, netting three cards from your deck. Uh, what compared to your potentially compared to your opponent? The last card we have is kind of a flex spot, but I think it's pretty good. Is Poke Gear 3.0? Obviously just tutors up, or not tutors up, but can draw a supporter out of the top seven cards of your deck. I like it because especially when it comes to getting a card for Jirachi or however you pull it out, uh, it's kind of a two for one against your deck when it comes to not drawing energies out. So you draw this, that's one card out of your deck, play it, and most likely you'll be able to find a supporter and therefore you take two cards out of your deck. Uh, so that's the, that's the deck list as of right now. A lot of the numbers are pretty flexible. All right, so now we're just going to talk about some considerations about how to go about executing your combo, given this, given the what deck you're playing against. And uh, one thing that I feel like is kind of not difficult to play around, but just something to be aware of is the fact that the babies is not a very robust target. Uh, it's very great catcher uh, prone. You only have two in your deck, so if one's prized and then they manage to knock that one out, uh, that's that's GG right there. Shaman can it's only good for like one knockout. He'll probably get knocked out with only 80 HP. It does have zero retreat cost though, which is very notable. Uh, so let's say you have a bunch of energy in your hand. Uh, you're going to be playing Misty's favor a lot in this deck. So. It's good to be cognizant of how many hat ladies you have, how many times you can execute the combos, uh, whether or not you have LT Surge, and uh, basically gauging when to play these onto your bench. Ideally, you just have Poke Dolls and Jirachis and a Lapras to basically continue to uh, stock your hand with the targets. And while in theory, playing the babies and starting to apply fairy energy to it, or even Shaman, to Kind of like lower the uh, bar for success from playing the hat ladies um, especially if you suspect that they can one shot this via great catcher i almost uh, would uh, i think the better play is to just keep this in your hand and only play it when you are when you can execute the combo it's kind of like a sliding scale where on the opposite end if you're worried about reset stamp um, that will just remove it from your hand so it's kind of a tricky balance to maintain 
I will say though, like obviously reset stamp is an exception, uh, and you only have so many Stevens resolve to get those out, and it does take your turn. Uh, but playing Shaman on the turn the combo is perfectly acceptable because let's not use our energy for turn on the babies instead uh, let's say we're ready to execute the combo and then we play shaman where at the same turn we're going to play supreme puff leaf energy for turn you're going to get another turn another leaf energy for turn so if you have both grass energy in your hand it's probably best to leave shaman in your hand until then just to play around custom catcher nine tails or something like that um, potentially depending on your board state, even a Fion can just disrupt your plan that easily. So just a couple things to keep in consideration. Uh, it's kind of, it's not the easiest thing in the world to when you're kind of like searching through your deck to count all the Morgans, Danas, Evelyns, and Nitas. It may take a little bit of time, but it's good just to take inventory of what your options are. Um, and then obviously check to make sure you have the Shaman, you have the at least two Grass Energy. In the event that like Shaman is prized again, Rolling Panic can technically get the job done. Uh, but whenever I do execute Supreme Puff and then Rolling Panic is my win condition, um, there's a, a lot a, more often than not I need so many heads in a row that I'm not able to get nearly close enough damage. Um, Caldeo right off the bat is like, all right, well I guess that's it. Uh, some similar for Latios GX. So. Um, as always guys let me know what your thoughts are in a comment down below uh, again I don't I don't think this is a tier one deck I'd be surprised if this wins any tournament I would I feel like each um, when you're going up against meta decks you're kind of at a disadvantage but it is possible to win every matchup but I don't think your odds are favorable but I definitely recommend you try it out in a casual uh, casual setting it's actually a lot of fun to play I think on both sides it's pretty fun it's kind of like all right the combo is coming uh, I played against a um, Trevenant Dust Noir deck with uh, Jessica and James so very unfavorable matchup uh, but we still managed to pull off a win uh, certain times you just have to go for the combo you know LT surge into Misty's favor into Morgan pretty early on so your hit your hit percentages won't be great for the energy but uh, it kind of just makes it more exciting for the matchup so um, as always guys thanks for watching let me know what your comments are down below don't forget to enter the giveaway close on wednesday i'm moana turtle and i'll catch you guys next time